What's going on guys? Marky Williams from the YouTube channel Online Certification Course. Here I put together this quick rundown tutorial, seven tactics to help retain your warehouse employees. More after the intro. What's going on guys, Marky Williams and welcome back to my channel, Online Certification Courses. Here I put together this quick tutorial in regards to seven tactics on how to retain warehouse employees. I mentioned in other tutorials in regards to the warehouse being the backbone to any business company. If you don't have them in line, you can sell $5 million worth of product a month. If your warehouse team is not up to par, you're going to be losing money. You'll also be losing money on the back end in regards to high turnaround rates. A lot of upper management think we could just get warm bodies in there, have a warehouse manager go ahead and delegate this stuff to these inexperienced people and expect some productivity out of them and long as some profits. Not the case. Little do they know, you sit down and hire a bunch of people to come in and they threaten you with, look all these applicants we have and so forth and this and that. We'll have someone else in here, someone else in here and so forth. Little do they know. The whole onboarding process, if you don't do that correctly, it's literally $5,000 per person you're hiring, you're onboarding, you're training them, and they're not happy, they back out the door, you're back to square one. So are you really making any money? But in the meantime, you also need to be overseeing the warehouse operations. So if you get your warehouse team in order right away, less stress, saving money, and you can put that into those pockets of your employees. All right, so let's get into number one, which is managing the schedule expectation. Don't sugarcoat it down. Let them know what the expectation of the work schedule is. Is it overtime? Is it under 40 hours, 35 hours? Is it first shift, second shift? Be transparent with them during the interview process. Don't tell them one thing, then you get them on board. It's just totally different. Like I said, once again, they won't be around. Let them know how the scheduling works, what's the process behind it, the thoughts behind it, and so forth. Be open with them. From the beginning, you have a smoother transition as they become part of your warehouse team. So let's get into number two. There's a persistent belief that um, entry-level warehouse positions doesn't lead to a career. Um, Sit down when you interview and let them know, let the candidates know that there is potential in the warehouse. So starting from the warehouse and working your way up, you can eventually come to um, warehouse associate, to lead warehouse, to assistant manager, supervisor, all the way up to um, operation. So let them know, do you have an upskilling um, program in there as well, cross training, or you have programs that you get them certified in forklift, stand up forklift, and so forth. So let them know the potential that you have in that warehouse department and how you can facilitate it to them. Get them into these programs with the upskilling and so forth. Get them engaged and it'll be more productivity coming out of that warehouse when you do so. So let's get into number three. So this here is a tactic of how to retain the employee after being hired. So it's a simple thing, it's an onboarding process. If you have this in line, clipped up, and it makes a smooth transition from candidate to employee, it's a beautiful thing. You can't just take them, throw them out there into the wilderness and say, be fruitful and be productive and go about your business. Um, the thing with the onboarding process, it gives you that transition. Um, give them a start date, an offering letter, and so forth. Um, pay scale of course is going to be in there and when they come in you're going to be sort of mentoring them through the onboarding process of how stuff is is actually being done so they usually take three to five days you know a solid week of the mentoring the onboarding process and so forth and you're just showing them the ropes because you have to understand they did a little research to get in for that interview you know they do you know you check the company out see what they're about and everything but still Part of the onboarding process is let them get their hands on training and just guide them through for like, like say, a week. And that gives them more um, accountability, feel a sense of belonging and so forth. So th the retention will be a slow turnaround as people getting in and saying, yeah, I feel lonely. So, you know, end up leaving. That's a high turnover rate. So onboarding process, which I also will throw either a link down there or a thumbnail. You can click on and check out my tutorial on onboarding process. So let's get into number four. 
So, you know, number four lines up with number three that I just mentioned. So number four, you got the onboarding process done. You bring them out there to the warehouse, clip these new guys up with the equipment they need, the tools they need to be successful, productive, give them training. Um, warehouse came a long way with pencil and paper jotting stuff down. Um, technology and logistics and shipping and receiving is phenomenal in 2022 right about now. So there's going to be... Um, tablets and so forth, um, logins, um, Zooms. You're, you're not running to your desk somewhere to pick up a phone call. You got your tablet in hand, the Zooms pop in, you're doing Zoom conferences and everything. Yes, in the warehouse. All that is going on. So get them the training they need because some of them might not even touch the tablet before or even know how to use it. And Zoom, I mean, even me, I past two years was Zooming and I was in the warehouse. So Get them clipped up, give them the confidence and so forth and still move forward. Um, like I said, the onboarding process, it will consist of this as well. Make them feel engaged and like I said, productivity. You can thank me later by actually liking and commenting below. Subscribe to the channel. A lot of good things coming up out of here. So let's get to number five. So this one right here, when it comes to uh, work culture in a company or business and so forth, warehouse isn't the first thing that comes to mind. You know, upper management over there, they got their, their culture and then the warehouse, they get shafted. So even, you know, you're in the warehouse, even if you have to bring up some packet slips, invoices and so forth up front, you start seeing the suits and everybody there and you see how they mingle and vibe and everything. You come back to the warehouse. A lot of times you don't see that. So go ahead and create a work culture in the warehouse and just have an empathy and just a family um, state of mind with your team as well. Um, be over communicative, um, give incentives, bonuses, stop being stingy. And also, you know, I got a, a tutorial also I'm going to leave up in the thumbnail. You can click on it, which is the gimbal walk, which is a beautiful thing when it comes to logistics and so forth. Um, check that out as well. I'm going to go ahead and stick that up at the end. So let's jump into number six. Keeping a clean warehouse. Number one, a clean, tidy warehouse. Number one, it boosts morale in there. You know, you don't want to go into a warehouse and boxes and dust and dirt and stuff is all over the place and such. Um, keeping a neat warehouse and the boxes on the shelf perfect, pristine labels out and so forth. Make sure the forklift pallet jack and so forth has a designated spot that is in at all times when it's not being used. Um, keeping a, a clean warehouse, um, it reduced the trips and falls, the injuries and so forth. If a lot of that is going on, you may get a visit from OSHA and they'll start poking around as something that you don't want in your business is OSHA because they'll start writing out them damn fines. Oof. Eliminate lawsuits as well to keep a tidy, um, neat warehouse. And like I said, it boosts morale. People look forward to coming into the warehouse and so forth. And let upper management, when they come by poking around and stuff, and they may say, hey, looking pretty clean up in here. So there's a lot of incentives to keeping the warehouse clean, organized, and so forth. So let's jump into number seven. This one right here should be numero uno for over 100 years but now with everything going on for the past two years and stuff is people are coming in you got um candidates coming in they first they worry about number one the pay scale number two what's the work-life balance like i got things going on outside of work but i'm trying to come here to be productive what are your stance on it you know and that has to do with you no know, flexibility have empathy towards other people's um, life outside of work as well they may tend to their kids um elderly so forth they may have ongoing doctor's appointments um it's simple to say hi he always in and out in and out i need someone who's constantly here so if you give that flexibility to your team i'm guaranteed they're gonna be productivity they, they're coming back in from that appointment doing what they got to do up in there to make up for the lost time so you get that on the back end as well so there is my seven tactics to keep the turnover rate low in the warehouse so many thanks for checking me out right quick um, please make sure you like and subscribe to my channel once again many good things are still coming out the gate um, go ahead and check these thumbnails that's gonna be floating around thereafter well should be like right around here make sure i'm pointing to them correctly and also i'm gonna have some links down below as well many thanks this is marky williams 
and I'm out.